letter came from the Associate Deputy Attorney General Bradley Weinsheimer, who in, is in response to a request for guidance from Mueller earlier this month and implies that Mueller cannot discuss his disagreements with Attorney General William Barr. Quote, any testimony must remain within the boundaries of your public report because matters within the scope of your investigation were covered by executive privilege, including discussion about investigative steps or decisions made during your investigation, not otherwise described in the public version of your report. The letter adds, it is the department's long-standing policy not to discuss the conduct of uncharged third parties. A spokesman for Mueller, Jim Popkin, said on Monday that Mueller will have a brief opening statement and will then offer the entire report of the special counsel investigation as his full statement for the hearing record. Popkin said Mueller intends to abide by the commitment he made in his only public statement. Any testimony from this office would not go beyond our well, report. Well, you know, uh, Mike Barnacle, it's, it's outrageous that Robert Mueller can't talk about the concerns that he might have uh, with Barr, especially when Barr made misstatements about uh, the nature of his report. They had conversations about those disagreements. Uh, and and it, it really this this entire situation uh, is going to be fodder for constitutional lawyers and law constitutional law professors for years to, to come, because you have a president who it was suggested in this report could have been charged on ten separate occasions for obstruction of justice, but Mueller said he couldn't do that because the Justice Department told him he couldn't do that. Now the Justice Department is saying, you can't talk about the President of the United States obstructing justice or what charges you would have brought because we told you that you couldn't, uh, couldn't charge right. him. It's, again, it's, it's circular logic. And again, everything the Justice Department's doing now is to protect Donald Trump politically. It has nothing to do with what's the law or what's right. Yeah, you know, Joe, even with the Justice Department guidelines that were issued last night in response to Bob Mueller's request for uh, uh, guidelines, uh, I think a lot of Democrats are going to be disappointed tomorrow uh, in Bob Mueller's testimony. And I think a lot of Republicans on the Judiciary Committee, when they begin to probe him on the roots of the Russia investigation, are going to get some real pushback from the former director of the FBI. He will stand up for the people who have worked for him, both in the Bureau and during the uh, investigation. And, you know, listen, let's face it, the bottom line is there are only three questions I think that most Americans want the answers to. Was there obstruction? Was there collusion? And, uh, you know, it was, would Donald Trump have been indicted had he not been president of the United States? I mean, those are three yeah, pretty I'm, simple questions, but I don't think he'll, I don't think you'll get the answers to those tomorrow, sadly. Let's bring in national political reporter for NBC News, Carol Lee, with new reporting on the lingering questions about the report that Mueller is likely to face. Specifically, why Donald Trump Jr. was the only American attendee of the infamous Trump Tower meeting in July of 2016 not questioned by investigators. That is a really good question, Carol. Yeah, Mika, and it's one that um, is certainly Chairman Schiff of the Intelligence Committee um, talked about over the weekend as, as something that he seems likely to ask Robert Mueller about. The Trump Tower meeting was a really key focus of the investigation in terms of the collusion portion of the investigation. Uh, you know, this was not some he said, he said, where there were open questions about that. There were explicit emails from Russians to Trump, to Donald Trump Jr. Uh, making an offer for information and explicit um, acceptance of that offer, interest in that offer. And then there was this meeting. And one of the things that we don't know is why Donald Trump Jr. wasn't interviewed by the special in, as part of the investigation. The Robert Mueller's report says that he declined to be voluntarily interviewed. And that word voluntarily is a key because it suggests that there was was an ask. And so sources we spoke to said there were two possible reasons that Donald Trump Jr. was not interviewed. One, that investigators decided he wasn't important to the investigation. 
That seems, according to them, impossible to believe, given that he arranged this meeting. And the second right. possible reason would be that he decided to invoke his Fifth Amendment right. Um, and Donald Trump's lawyer declined to comment on whether he did that. But as I said earlier, Chairman Schiff said that, you know, he it tends to dive into um, evidence of the pieces of evidence that relate to the collusion portion of the investigation. And he specifically mentioned this uh, instance, this, this Trump Tower meeting. So we're likely to see this, this come up. However, whether Robert Mueller decides to add anything to what we don't know uh, is a real open mm -hmm. question and seems highly unlikely, given everything you guys know as well as anybody. Um, well, you know, he, he just doesn't want to go any further than what he's already said. Well, but what would be the reason not to explain why Don, Donald Trump Jr. wasn't, I mean, it seems like fair game to understand why a central player in that meeting, which is central to everything with the report, mm -hmm. was not questioned. Well, if you look at the page 117 of the report, which addresses this question, um, where it says that he declined to be voluntarily interviewed, the next sentence in that is redacted. And, and it mm -hmm. says that, um, you know, because it was grand jury, it has to do with grand jury material. And so that's the, the reason why potentially um, Robert Mueller might not say, want, say anything or disclose um, why he wasn't interviewed. You know, uh, Chuck Todd had asked President Trump a few weeks ago whether Don Jr. had been subpoenaed. And, and the president's answer was, I don't know. You'll have to ask him what well, we have. And, and we haven't gotten an answer. All right, NBC's Carol Lee, thank you so much. We Thanks, appreciate Carol. your reporting. Thanks. You know, there's a, a Steve Ratner, it's frustrating. There's a recurring theme here about uh, all these investigations going on and everybody uh, pulling back uh, before giving Americans the answers that they need, despite the fact that Americans have paid millions and millions of dollars uh, to, for, for these investigations. So now we're not going to hear why Don Jr. Uh, wasn't subpoenaed, why he wasn't investigated, when not only he set up that infamous meeting, he also was excited about it, said, it, lo love it, can't wait to have the meeting. That's the first guy you want to actually uh, interview. Uh, the question that needs to be answered is, why didn't he subpoena Donald Trump? The United States Supreme Court most likely would have upheld that subpoena and made Donald Trump sit down and be interviewed by Robert Mueller. If you were doing an obstruction of justice case, an investigation, and you have 10 instances where you believe that justice was obstructed, you need that answer. We could ask the same thing as the Southern District of New York. Uh, it is believed by most legal scholars, or uh, many legal scholars, that Donald Trump's payoff to Stormy Daniels uh, was illegal. Uh, it violated the FEC. Well, the Southern District of New York drops those charges, doesn't explain why. Uh, was it, again, because the Justice Department is protecting Donald Trump for so long as he's president of the United States? And if that's the case, so you're saying somebody can break the law to get elected president of the United States and then you can't charge them with that crime because they're president of the United States? Talk about circular logic and a, a, just a complete obliteration of our belief that no man is above the law. So uh, so what do we expect from Mueller tomorrow? It also doesn't really fit entirely into historic parallels. For those of us of a certain age who can remember back to Leon Jaworski and Watergate, he named Nixon as an unindicted co-conspirator. He went that far. He didn't try to actually indict him for the reasons we all know, but at least it was there on the record. Ken Starr, whether we liked it or not, told us uh, probably a lot more than we wanted to know about Bill Clinton's activities, but certainly didn't hold anything back. And now, as you've just described, we have this odd situation where we have a special prosecutor of an impeccable integrity who went about this in as nonpartisan, as methodical a way as you could possibly do it, and then has this odd place where he's decided to stop and not go any further. And, mm -hmm. I, and I, what I worry about, and it's really more from a political point of view, is that he will stop tomorrow and he will not go any further. Mm -hmm. He will simply either repeat from that report and Donald Trump with his huge megaphone will stand up and say, you see, I said no collusion, I said no obstruction, Mueller just agreed with me yesterday, even though he won't have agreed with him yesterday. 
and we're going to be in that kind of a, a situation. So I think the Democrats are playing yeah, a slightly high-risk game here uh, as to whether this actually helps them or hurts them in trying.